Uh, Why doesn't everybody take a minute, bite off any question you want? John, we'll start with you, and we'll just work right down and sure. Jay, you can wrap. Um, with respect to the issue of uh, security and the cost on substations at $200,000 per substation, I've already seen technology that can do it at $10,000 per mm -hmm. node. So ultimately, there is technology that- 10,000 per node. Per node, right. Mm -hmm. So it'd be 10,000 per substation, for example, in, in that particular example. So it takes it bit down by a factor of 20. Uh, that ultimately can be done. And the issue of moving the CO2 um, you know, to the grid, Again, even with a 50% coal, we're reducing the CO2, and that's what the- P On a well-to-wheels basis. Yes, on a wheels-to-wheels yeah. basis, we're reducing the CO2, and the grid's only gonna get cleaner. We're only gonna put more wind on the grid, more solar, more geothermal on the grid. So ultimately, I, th I don't think that's, that's really an issue. Those are but the two ideas. As Felix uh, Kramer always says, uh, you know, the electric car is the only one that gets cleaner the more you yeah, use it. That's you right, know. absolutely. Sue. I would have everybody take a look at what California is doing to connect the dots between decoupling sales of electricity from profits, throwing financial incentives to get utilities on the same wavelength as distributed generation, efficient solutions, clean energy. Uh, there's a whole long list of other things which I will not say, but there's great lessons learned there to be followed. John. Well, I, I think that uh, we've talked about a lot of different things. I think the, the, the House and Senate have both passed renewable electricity standards. They just can't seem to pass them together nationally. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. that, that also take account of, of uh, savings on the efficiency side. Uh, the federal government has enormous power beyond uh, things that are new that Congress uh, can enact, uh, the power to procure, the power for advanced sales, et cetera. But what this is going to really take, when you think about all these moving parts, is, again, a real plan, leadership coming from the White House, driving this solution and driving uh, the transformation of the uh, of the economy, and I think Jay raised earlier the industrial scale of World War II. It's not far off. Andy, I'm so, I'm so glad I'm not part of a campaign this year. <laughs> the the, uh, um, uh, the no God, <laughs> keep me. I'm going where Sue goes. I'm out of the Beltway. <laughs> the, 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 um, uh, let me let me talk about the things that aren't included. I thought it was a very important point the gentleman made about transformation of the economy. Uh, and unintended consequences. This is where government has a role to lead, but not necessarily be a cheerleader. There are more mundane things that a government will have to do in terms of certification, testing, validation, advancing of the R&D. One of the things you just said when you, when you talk about leaving off the revenue from the service and the repair shop in the automotive industry, people forget that we get all of our road taxes from gasoline. So what happens is we begin alleviating gasoline at a rate that we find consequential Congress is going to have to deal with these realities. There are more complex uh, components that have got to be uh, put in here because we're not just going to let the, the roads and highways go to hell as, as we do it. it. These things aren't insurmountable, but they've got to be computed in every bit as much as security and environment and the other things that we're talking about today. The, the, um, I want to thank the guy for the plug on the, uh, on the studies that our office funded uh, at MIT for, uh, uh, for a, a vision beyond incrementalism for geothermal and for wind at 20% and for, and for the built environment at, by 2015. So that's what the new administration with their, all their vaunted leadership will inherit is a <laughs> department of energy that's gone beyond incrementalism and redesigning the way the portfolio ought to go. And Republican or Democrat are gonna work with the same civil servants that are dedicated to Dan Riker and me and my successor. A feed-in tariff in Germany allowed them to leapfrog us we led in solar energy for a decade. We're now number four or five. Germany has, has gone way shot, way in front of us because of a feed-in tariff. I'll be introducing a bill in the next week or so to create a, a basically a performance-based guarantee to distributed energy for a price for 20 years. That's a price signal that will attract the financial capital Andy is talking about. Second is R&D. We've skirted around it, but I just want to say our R&D budget in the federal government is pathetic. Microsoft's research and development uh, budget is two and a half times the entire United States R&D budget for energy. Our Apollo Energy R&D was eight times. Our budget in 50 is 55 times higher in Iraq than clean energy. We gotta scale up. Last, I just wanna leave with one comment and plea to all of us in this room. Um, there are about three dozen members of the United States Congress, about 500, uh, 535 members of the United States Congress who have some basic understanding of the potential of electrifying the United States transportation system. That has to get up to well over 60% to make what we have to have happen in, in Washington, D.C. I hope that each of you will join Tom's leadership 
Andy's leadership, the rest of us, in educating your member of the United States Congress of the potential of this technology. If they understand the potential, we will get this job done. You are tremendous advocates. Go have a teach-in day to your member of the U.S. Congress and tell them what you're up to. We'll get this job done. Thank you. Okay, it's a great way to end it. David, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful panel. Please give them all a applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.